Hey everybody, we are going to do a fashion maneuvers class today. We're going to keep it short and sweet. Um, so put in the comments below where you're from. And if you have any questions about movements or about your body, just throw them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, just let me know where you're from. We'll give a couple minutes for everybody to join. Hi Cassandra, nice to see you. Um, we're just going to move our bodies. Hi Britt, I see lots of familiar faces coming in. Um, so if you've never done the fascial maneuvers before, they're a movement philosophy that heals the body. We have 10 primary movements that we recommend for people to do. Um, you can actually find them on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can do the 15 minute stress reset or the 45 minute full body reset. Awesome, Mexico, nice. We're gonna be down in Mexico uh, in the middle of October and also November. We have a retreat center down there. So we're gonna be hosting some workshops and classes there. Um, so lots of exciting stuff to come. If you want to meet us in Mexico, stay tuned. Sign up for our newsletter, um, which you can do in the link in our bio. And we'll be reaching out and letting you know the dates. Ontario, Canada. Nice. Awesome. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments before we start the class. I'll answer as many as I can. And then uh, we'll do probably like 15 to 20 minutes of movement just to relax our bodies. And then uh, I'm going to go eat some dinner. Send info from Mexico. Yes. It's in Cancun. Uh, hey, Lisa. South Dakota. Nice. Awesome. So, guys, if you've never done the fashion maneuvers before, um, I'm going to guide you through some intermediate, more advanced ones today. But you can find the basic and essential ones on our YouTube channel. Um, it's all free. All the education, all the workshops, all the events that we do, um, we do to teach people how to heal their bodies, teach them and give them the tools that they can use to help others as well. So if you want to support us, um, we do have supplements and other things that um, we charge for, but all the education, all the workshops, all the events are free. Ireland, awesome. Okay, so uh, we'll give it two more minutes and then we'll hop into the class. I started 28 day reset on the first. Is it normal to have hot flashes during some of the movements? Absolutely. Um, what happens is the body um, over time becomes restricted so blood flow and nutrients don't get to the areas of the body that we want. Um, when you do the maneuvers you're opening up the layers of fascia and the, the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, the nerves, everything starts to get space. You get blood flow and oxygen and nutrients to that area. So it opens it up. Hot flashes are normal. A lot of people go into uh, rest and digest or healing or healing crisis after doing the fascia maneuvers because they do provide the body the space that it needs to heal itself. We believe that the body can heal itself and with movements and um, proper nutrition and small lifestyle changes that can happen over the course of 28 days. Um, and if you haven't joined the 28 Day Life Reset, you can do so on our app. If you go to app.humangarage.net, you can sign up for our programs. We've got a three day reset, a seven day and then a 28 day. So um, head in there, hit the getting started button in the classes section and you can go through the content um, we, we, uh, we provide all the education, all the movements, all the supplements, everything that you need in order to heal yourself and transform your life. Healing crisis. Healing crisis is when you're doing all these good things to help your body, but your body's been holding on to trauma or chemicals or emotions and things, and they're all coming out at once, and that can be overwhelming sometimes. So when you're taking care of your body and you have symptoms come up, like stuff on your skin, or um, you sleep differently, or you're sweating at night, or whatever that might be, um, that's actually your body detoxing. So what we recommend is to go for a walk, take Epsom salt baths, continue to do the maneuvers, and also reach out to the community in our app. You can actually post um, in the getting uh, su support section and people will support you along the way because other people who are further along in the journey who've been through the things that you're going through will be able to um, give you guidance based on their personal experiences. So. Awesome, okay, um, so let's, let's get started. If you have any questions throughout the class, put them in the comments section there and, uh, and we'll go from there. So what we're gonna do is just tune into our bodies for about 30 seconds to feel where we're at. Super important to know where your body is at in terms of tension and stress and emotions before we start so that you can measure again at the end of the class. And if, if you're enjoying the class, please share it and it helps get it out there to more people and supports our mission. So let's get started. Standing shoulder width apart. <sighs> Relax your body. We're just going to feel from all the way from your toes to the top of your head. Okay, so close your eyes. Get a sense of where your body's at. 
We're going to slowly go up from the feet. All the way up into the knees. The hips. You can move around a little bit. See if one side's tighter than the other. Or if you have more weight on one foot than the other, that's also important to know. We're going to go all the way up to the chest and the shoulders. A lot of people carrying weight on their shoulders today. Let's go to the top of the head. And I also want you to tune into your thoughts. Are they racing? Are they positive? Are they negative? Um, tune into your emotions. Are you happy, excited, stressed, sad? Okay, so get a reference point. What we're going to do throughout the class, we're going to measure back against that, okay? So to start off, let's do a little bit of work on the head and open up the sinuses. So sometimes we get a little bit of blocked fascia in our face right here, and uh, that makes us have a stuffy nose. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that up. Taking the right hand, you're going to put it on the left side of your nose, right on the ridge, and you're going to pin the fascia really tight. So pin it. You're gonna take the left hand and you're gonna push the skin backwards, stretching it away from your nose and hold it there. Once you've got it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move around very slowly and breathe. I like to breathe in through my nose for this one because the, when we breathe in through the nose, the tension changes in the head. So breathe in deep. Two. Three, four, move around and find what feels good. Five, and six. Ooh. Shake it off, take a deep breath. You might have a runny nose after that one, it's totally okay. Um, so why we move around and get different angles is because when I pin the fascia here and I move the body, then the bones and everything has to move around it here. Hi Rhonda, nice to see you. Okay, so let's do the other side. You might feel adjustments in your head as you're doing this, like a chiropractic adjustment, that's also normal. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take your left hand, pin the fascia on the right side of your nose, and pin it. Take your right hand, push the skin backwards really hard. And then hold it there, lock it in place. And I'm just gonna move around in all directions. I like to even squat a little bit. And we're gonna breathe in deep through the nose. Breathe in. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Ooh. and shake it off, take a deep breath. <sighs> Feel your lungs. That one's my favorite to do, especially when I'm congested, okay? Um, there's lots more that you can do to open that up. So why don't we do the jaw next? So the jaw, sometimes it gets tight. You know, if you're angry, you tighten your jaw. If you're chewing on one side of the body, what happens is if I tight, tighten the right side of my jaw, then that tightens the whole right side of my body. So when we do the jaw release, it's gonna open up the fascia on that entire side, okay? So we're gonna do uh, right hand with the fingers facing backwards. You're gonna find the meaty part right on the TMJ. And the left hand, you're gonna go fingers facing forwards. And we're gonna squeeze our cheeks and then you're gonna twist the skin so your hands meet at the bottom, okay? So twist, almost like you, you should look kind of funny when you do it. And then once you've got it, hold it there, and then slowly move around. And breathe. I'm getting a couple of bone adjustments myself. So I like to move looking right to left and up. And then if you have to, you can readjust your fingers. You want to get a good grip. And breathe through the nose. And relax, unwind. Awesome. So uh, put in the comments if you have any questions and if you're noticing any changes already. 
and uh, let me know where you're from. Okay, so now that we've done the jaw, we've done the sinuses, let's, uh, let's open up the forehead a little bit. So um, sometimes you'll see people have lines right here. It's because they're, they're angry, right? They're holding anger. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin the skin with either hand on the nose, really tight on the top of it. And your other hand is gonna pull the skin upwards. You can use your palm or your fingers. And you're just creating a stretching sensation on the skin in this area. And then slowly move around and breathe. A few more breaths. Ooh. Shake it off. And the reason why this is a little different than massage is because massage you're actually sliding and then you go again, right? But in this case, we're actually taking two spots and we're stretching it and then moving around and breathing. And as we breathe, we drive air into that area to create expansion. Okay, tightness in the back of the neck on the right side. Okay, well let's do something for that. So um, the ears are a really good access point for the head. Um, so you've got all your fascia here and we're trying to stretch it and move it around. Well, one of the best ways is to grab your ears. So let's do the right side first. So we'll take our left hand, you're gonna grab the top of your right ear and grab it really tight. I like to put like socks or uh, socks on my hands or use a towel or tissue because what happens is the ears get a little slippery and you wanna get a good grip, okay? And then your right hand's gonna grab the bottom, pull the bottom forwards and the top backwards, twisting the ear. So twist it really hard, a lot harder than you think. And once you've got it, we're gonna slowly move around in all directions and breathe. And readjust if you have to. Stretch your ear. When you stretch it and you're pulling up with the right hand, you may even feel that go right into your neck. Whew. And shake it off, shake your hands off. And uh, feel the side of your neck, feel your jaw, your shoulder on that side. And let me know how that feels, and then we'll do the other side. So um, for this one, if you want, I re highly recommend grabbing gloves, a towel, or a tissue, or something to get better grip on your ears. It's like 10 times better, okay? So we're gonna do right hand over top, grab the top of your left ear, left hand grab the bottom, and you're gonna pull the bottom forwards and the top backwards really tight, like that. Twist it, twist it. Pull it nice and hard, and then you're gonna move around slowly and breathe. And you can actually pull your ear in as many directions as you want. The idea is we're just stretching the fascia here. Okay, Whew. shake it off. Move your neck around. And notice if you've had a shift in your perception, so your eyes, if the room is brighter, more detail, uh, more clear, or reduced tension just in the head overall. Okay, next one we're gonna do is called antler twist. This one's one of the essential fascia maneuvers. And what we're doing is we're actually opening up the fascia. You've got different uh, plates or bones on your head and they get stuck. If you get a contusion or a hit to the head, it creates, a, it creates a knot in that area. The bones can, can get really stuck together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. So with the right hand, you're gonna go right on the side of the head here. You got your temple. We're gonna go um, palm facing backwards, right over top of that spot. And then your left hand is gonna go fingers facing forward. Okay, and we're gonna squeeze our head and we're gonna move it so that our hands go to the top. So squeeze your head and then twist the fascia until your hands meet at the top of your head. Whew. So you're locking, you're basically twisting the fascia and locking the bones there. And now we're gonna move around really slowly in all directions and breathe deep through the nose. And if 
your hands slip or you need to readjust, feel free to. You want to get a good grip. I like to even squat and look up to the right and left. And relax. All right, let's shake that off. And uh, if you're squeezing your head and twisting the skin, um, a lot of people do it a lot lighter than, than you think. Like, you can go pretty hard. Um, the head tends to get a lot of tension because we've got three zones in the body. The head, the torso, and the legs. And they're counterbalancing each other. So if my head goes to the left when I walk, my torso goes to the right, and my hips and legs go to the left. Okay, so we're constantly in counter-rotation. And the pressure has to match. So if I have pressure on, this, on, on the side of my jaw here, means I have pressure here and also on my foot. So all three zones are connected to each other and as we change one of them, it changes all of them. Okay, so because the, the head has the same amount of pressure but it's in a smaller, smaller area, it uh, genuinely feels more uncomfortable for people. Okay, so let me know how you're feeling in the comments if you have any questions and then uh, we'll get into the next one which is a C-section release. Um, the reason why I say that is because um, babies who are born with, as a C-section, their uh, head does not go through the birth canal, which helps it cone and actually forms the shape of the bones in the skull. So what happens is, is this frontal lobe, it gets stuck. And because it's stuck, you don't get the adequate nutrients and blood flow and all the resources that it needs in order to function properly. So that drives ADHD, anxiety, um, stress, it impacts our decision making and the way we plan and, and uh, I feel somewhat stoned. Yes, that can happen. When the body's in stress, we release stress hormones and when that's chronic, then uh, that suppresses our feel good hormones. So when you do these movements, you start to reduce the stress in your body and then the feel good hormones release and that produces that effect of feeling high. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna open up this frontal bone. So if you've had a hit to the head or you're a C-section baby, um, this is really, really powerful. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna grab all the way up just past the hairline. Imagine you've got like a plate here. You're gonna grab it, squeeze it like this and pull it down, okay? So put your fingers there, grab it right by the hairline and pull it down really hard and tight. And then we're gonna look down and breathe together. So breathe in through the nose. Two. Three. And then we're gonna look up to the right and then slowly up to the left. And then I want you to look up and just start to move around in all directions. And keeping that grip, readjust if you have to. And breathe in through the nose. Ooh. All right. Okay, so walk around, shake it off, fix your hair if you have to. Um, this one is super powerful because a lot of people try and reduce anxiety, taking pills and um, you know meditating or sitting there, but sometimes it's driven through the body. Like if the body is in stress, the brain uh, has racing thoughts because it's constantly calculating ways to solve problems. So the idea is, is if we keep the body out of stress, then the brain calms down. And that's been our method at Human Garage is really just um, the fascia maneuvers are a movement philosophy that heals the body and it does that by opening up the fascia so then everything else can relax, okay? So put in the comments if you notice a big shift on that one. I have a rush to my head. Even though I've done that a bunch of times, it still gets stuck. And the reason why is because we sit in chairs and you know, we're not as active as we used to and the world that we live in isn't symmetrical. So there's constantly imbalances that we're reacting to and the body starts to tighten up, okay? So next one we're gonna do, let's do the vagus nerve. And the reason why we call it the vagus nerve is because the area in the neck gets really tight and the vagus nerve, it goes from the, the nervous system or the brain all the way down to the organs and the heart, okay? And, and if your neck is tight, then it's not getting the optimal bandwidth and, and communication speeds and everything that it needs to function properly. And the vagus nerve, it helps with uh, sleep and stress and it helps digestion and your organs. So it's super, super important. And this is one of the easiest ways to open it up. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna go onto your right trap area here. Okay, so right where your first rib would be. 
And what I want you to do is just turn the skin with your fingers one way or the other. Okay, so you can go forward or backwards. But you're really just like, imagine like sticking it, like pinning it there so that it doesn't move. And then we're gonna take our right hand and you're gonna push your chin away from you diagonally up. So imagine you're getting the, the maximum amount of stretch through here. Okay, so push, stretch the skin between your hands and then slowly move around and breathe. Shake that off. Take a deep breath. You might notice a shift on the entire right side of your body, like a calming sensation. Okay? So let's do the other side. So we're gonna pin the fascia right on the first rib here. I like to torque it. When you torque fascia, it creates friction, and that friction causes it to break apart the adhesions. So we're gonna twist that fascia, hold it there, pin it so it can't move. And then we're going to push our chin away from that hand as far away diagonally as possible. So push it away and then slowly move around and breathe. Ooh. Shake it off. We're going to walk around for this one. And I want you to notice any shifts in your uh, left to right since we started the class. Okay, I feel a lot calmer. I feel like my shoulders have dropped a little bit high, just like somebody mentioned in the comment section there. Comment if you are feeling high, feeling relaxed, feeling calm already, and if you have any questions or uh, movements that you want me to go through, and kind of free, freestyling it today. So while we wait for the comments, I'm gonna do a movement for the shoulder. Lots of shoulder issues. So we're gonna take the right hand, we're gonna put it on the left shoulder there, and we're gonna bring it up to 90 degrees. And then the elbow here, imagine like this bone goes right into the shoulder capsule there. So if, if we turn that bone, then all the fascia and everything in the arm goes around the bone and it twists and it relaxes. So we're gonna do that right now. So Take the left hand, and you're gonna go right on the elbow here, and you're gonna turn the skin, like you're trying to turn it like a key all the way into the shoulder there. And once you've found the direction that feels tighter for you, you're gonna hold that one, the tight side. Okay, so I'm going out, outwards for myself. Hold it really tight, twist the skin, and then we're gonna just slowly move around and breathe. I like to squat going right to left. And as I turn my torso, I turn my head the opposite. Ideally, you wanna hold this for about three minutes, uh, but I just like to, to move around until it feels good and it's ready. And then, if you want, we can advance it. We can actually bring that hand above the head. But continue to turn that elbow there. Super important to create that tension, turning, Oh, and torque, torque pattern on the elbow. And then you can move around and lean over. The main thing is that you grab the elbow and twist it. The rest of it, it's all up to you. You just find it feels good. And then move slowly. If you move too fast, the body starts to tighten up. To stabilize itself. Okay. Whew. Shake it off. We're going to go for a walk and feel that one. Notice if you have a difference between the right and left. We had a couple of comments there. Uh, just starting to explore this with brain injury recovery. It feels good. Awesome. That's great to hear. Also, if you have a brain injury, what happens is the vestibular system and the eye balance goes off. So, um, you know, working with the eyes in particular. There's a couple exercises I believe we have in some of our videos in our feed, 
But the premise is holding your thumb right across about uh, six inches from your nose. And then you're keeping your eyes on it and you're gonna turn your head up while keeping your eyes here. Close your eyes, come back to center, open it up. Okay, and you wanna do that six times diagonally up to the right, six times to the middle, six times to the bottom, and then the other side, six times. And you're keeping your eyes here. All the way, close your eyes, bring it back. That resets your vestibular system, which will help dramatically, especially um, for people who are staring at screens all the time. Think about your eyes. They're limited to this, this, uh, this, this distance, right? They're not, they're not, very, they're not always looking in uh, the different ranges of motion. So you start to tighten up all the fascia from the eyes to the back of the head here. So the periphery also gets affected. Um, the other one that you can do is hands out in front of you at the uh, height of your nose. And you just go and follow with your eyes six to eight times, diagonally to the side and down. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all that. It takes, quite a, it takes a couple minutes, um, but that's really good for brain injuries or people who are staring at computers all day. Uh, awesome. Thanks, Rhonda. It's nice to see you. Can't wait to see you in Mexico. Um, okay, so what were we just doing? Oh, elbow. So let's do the left elbow. So take the left hand, put it on the right shoulder, and bring the arm up to 90 degrees there. We're going to take our right hand, and you're going to turn the fascia on the elbow really hard, and turn it the, the direction that feels the tightest. So again, mine's outward and hold it there. And then we're gonna slowly move around and breathe. As you turn your upper body, turn your head the opposite way. I'm gonna squat and do it. When you breathe through the nose, the air primarily goes to the upper half of the body, so. Because we're working on the shoulders right now, it's better to do that. And then to advance it, we're going to bring it up and above the head, keeping the turning torque pattern on the elbow. And then slowly move around and breathe. The more angles, the better. Whew. All right, shake it off. Awesome, so walk around, feel your shoulders. My feet are landing differently now. If you're also noticing something similar, just put it in the comments, let me know. And if you have any questions, we're gonna probably do one or two more movements and then, uh, and then wrap it up. So let's, uh, let's do the psoas stretch. And this one is basically stretching your intestines. The intestines run through here, and what happens is when we sit in chairs, they get all sticky. They're like sausage casings, and they get blocked. Because you got, it's, it's like a pipe, and the food's coming through from the small to the large intestine. But when you sit in a chair, you crush it so that stuff can't get through. And over time, it starts to um, twist and torque the intestines so that uh, the ileocecal valve blocks. If the ileocecal valve blocks, that leads to autoimmune, digestion issues like bloating, gas distension. Uh, cold hands, cold feet, rashes, rosacea, Graves disease. So it's just a whole whack of things that come off of that. Um, so the primary thing is the ileocecal valve there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually stretch the intestines for digestion. So taking the right and the left hand, you're gonna go on your belly button, go two inches to the right, and two inches down. And I want you to pull the skin up really tight. You should feel it stretch almost into your quad. Okay, so we're almost into your upper leg there. And then we're going to step our left foot forward, so our opposite leg, and lean back and turn your body to the left, head to the right, breathe in deep through the mouth. Two, three, breathe in through the nose. Two, Three. Whew. Okay, we're gonna walk that one off. Uh, you may notice that whole hip drop or even the quad pick up a little bit easier. 
And uh, pay attention to your digestion over the next couple of days when you do those movements. Just keep doing it maybe a couple times a day for, for the next week and see if you have a shift. Okay, so let's do the other side. So take both hands, put it on your belly button. We're gonna go two inches to the left, two inches down, and grab the skin really tight and pull up. Like stretch it. So you should feel almost like a burning, tearing sensation going right from your hands into your quad. Okay, now step the right foot forwards and lean back. Turn your body to the right, head to the left, and breathe in through the mouth. Two, three, breathe in through the nose. Two, three. Whew. All right, shake it off, walk around. Ah, take a deep breath. Walking is really important when we're working on the body. The reason why is because if you stub your toe, for example, you go for a walk after, your body's trying to avoid the pain. It's trying to heal that area, so it starts to create compensation patterns or movement patterns that aren't optimal. They just help you get through that pain and dysfunction. But what happens is we don't deal with the toe, we continue on with our life, and we save that compensation pattern and we start walking like that. And that means we're walking against restriction and we're walking least optimally over 10, 15, 20 years and then that leads to other issues in the body. So what happens is when we open up the fascia, we start to give space for the body to start to heal and fix and reprogram the way that we walk. Okay, so walking was supposed to be healing, but it's not today anymore because most people have dysfunction. Most people are wearing padded shoes. Most people are sitting in chairs all day and it's impacting the way that we move. Okay, so uh, put in the comments if you have any questions. I'm gonna do one more movement, so put it in the comments below what movement you're looking for, and, uh, and I will do it for you. So whoever's first. Thank you for the likes, appreciate it. And guys, we are uh, Human Garage. We were a clinic in LA. We had about 52 practitioners from multiple forms of medicine, from chiropractic to massage to physio to to naturopaths and nutritionists and essential oil and we had all of these different things and we were working on 10,000 patients to find out what was and what wasn't working in healthcare and how we could help the body heal and perform optimally. What we found was that empowering the person to do it themselves and implementing small tools throughout the day um, was the most effective. And the reason why is because you have your life and it put you in pain for whatever reason you're coming to get fixed, but then you go back to the life that gave you that pain. But if we give you the tools so that when you go back to that life, you can maintain it, then your body will start to heal. And even better is to start to shift that life that got you there in the first place. And that's what our 28 day life reset is for. It's 28 days of movement, education, supplements, and journaling, and then sharing with the community. And over those 28 days, the body starts to heal and people have a full life transformation. So, you can join that in our app. If you go to app.humangarage.net, it's free. You can sign up. It's gonna take you through the getting started, the three day, the seven day reset, and then the 28 day. So you've got a little bit of prep work before you get into that, okay? So is there anyone in Australia? Uh, we've, we've trained people down there. We don't have a human garage down there yet. But what we are doing is people who've gone through the 28 day life reset join our other programs. All of our education and workshops are free. So you can come in and you can learn about your body and how to heal yourself. And you can also learn at the coaching and practitioner level how to help people. So if you're looking for help, you can join a live class, you can reach out, you can join our app and put it in the comment section and maybe we can connect you with somebody that we have trained. So awesome. Okay, so I saw knee was first. So we're gonna do knee. Um, but that requires a chair. So I'm gonna grab a chair one second here. So, here's what we're gonna do. Hi Al, nice to see you. Um, so just like we did on the elbow where we're turning the skin, we're gonna do that on the knees now, okay? So. We're gonna, sitting down with the knees at 90 degrees, you're gonna grab the skin and you're gonna turn it with me. So find yourself a seat. You take your hands, you're gonna put them over top of your kneecaps. 
and you're going to turn the skin. So twist the skin on your knees, and your hands are going to do a thumbs up just like that. So twist the skin really tight. And uh, if you're having trouble with the grip, what I want you to do is grab a towel and, or readjust as you go. And we're going to hold this for a couple minutes here. So breathe in through the mouth. Two, three. I like to move my knees a little bit closer together and then move back out. The more angles, the better. Just breathe in through the nose. You might even feel this in your lower back. Two, three. And as you advance it and get uh, more experienced with the fascia maneuvers, more sensitive in your body, you might even feel this into your feet as a tingling sensation. Readjust if you have to. And if you're really struggling, you can actually get a friend to do this on you. All of these movements that we've done today can be done with a partner. They don't have to be trained. We're making lots of videos to guide you. Okay, so stand up and walk around. I hope that, uh, that helped your knees. Um, we've got lots more movements on our YouTube channel. You can go to the Human Garage TV on YouTube. We've got the 15 minute stress reset, the fascial organ reset. We've got finger exercises. We've got seated maneuvers. We've got a full body reset class. So there's lots of content on our YouTube. Make sure to subscribe because we're gonna be putting out more podcasts and more discussions and more classes and more content on there for you. Um, so. I'm just gonna grab some supplements here. Um, so we've got two, two supplements that, we're, that are coming out next week. They're on pre-sale. Guys, this is how we support ourselves. We're on a mission to teach people how to heal their bodies and help other people for free. Um, and this is actually our only source of revenue. So if this class helped you or uh, you wanna get in on the supplements that we're about to talk about, then uh, you can head to our website and you can purchase them. But the, the two supplements that I have here, we've got Fascial Foundation. Fascial Foundation has Dimitaceous Earth and Ashwagandha on it. The reason why we chose this one was because Dimitaceous Earth has 80% silica. Silica is what babies have. They have high silica content, low calcium. As we get older, we start to calcify. Our body starts to get sticky, hard, almost like a fiberglass. So the silica in there helps regenerate your hair, your nails, your teeth, your bones, and rebuild all the tissues in your body. It also rebalances your pH. It uh, removes all the metals and the toxins from your body as well. So um, this one, Fascial Foundation, it's got Diamantaceous Earth and Ashwagandha. And then the other one is Fascial Flow, which is Irish Sea Moss and Glyvia. So Irish Sea Moss, why do we pick that? We've tried trace minerals, we've, we've tried fulvic minerals, we've tried uh, lots of different ones. The reason why we chose Irish Sea Moss was because it has 92 of the minerals that the body needs. And because the soil and the water today does not have the mineral content that the body needs, we're not getting enough minerals in our diet. So the Irish sea moss, I haven't had it for a month because uh, we thought we were gonna have them earlier and I'm already noticing a difference in my skin and my body. Um, so the Irish sea moss, it's a, pre a, probi a prebiotic, so it feeds the bacteria in your gut. Um, so, so this one, fascial flow, it has all of the nutrients that you need to rebalance your hormones, regulate your mood, help with digestion. And uh, yeah, so if you like this, head to our website, you can order them, it will support us. Um, we also show you how to get these if you can afford them. Um, there's lots of other companies that do have stuff that, uh, that we recommend. So Irish Sea Moss and Diamond Tasia Earth are the two primary ones. Will those help with MS? Um, neurological stuff, yes. Um, especially the fascial foundation, the reason why is it helps remove metals from the body. Metals block the ability for fascia to communicate. Think of it like you have a keyboard and you dropped your, your water bottle or water on top of it and then you're trying to type. So it's, uh, it, that's what the metals do and it helps remove them from, from the body. So try those, but I also, supplements alone aren't the way to heal the body. The, the reason why we have supplements is because the body's not balanced. We're not getting something in our diet or there's something in our everyday life that is, that is contributing to us 
um, not feeling the way that we want to feel. So we are firm believers of bringing the body back to balance and creating a lifestyle where you don't need movement, um, like conscious movement that I'm scheduling and you don't need supplements. It's to build a lifestyle that is healthy. Okay? So guys, thank you so much for being here today and participating in the class. Um, if you want to check us out and get more content and more programs and more workshops and more events, we have lots in our app at app.humangarage.net. You can sign up there, uh, introduce yourself, join the classes at the Getting Started, then the three-day, seven-day, and 28-day, and then we'll see you in the other programs after that. Thank you so much. Bye.